Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to show you a really wearable technique in terms of strobing. Strobing itself is not the most wearable technique. It is literally just excessive highlighter all over your face. It's for me not intended to be an all over the face highlight because then you just end up looking greasy and it really just doesn't give any definition to your face at all other than a lot of shine. So the technique I'm showing you today is really going to bring out the areas of your bone structure in a way that is more defining rather than just kind of slathering extra highlighter all over your face and calling it strobing. I'll also be showing you how to wear a metallic or frosted lip and Revlon is sponsoring that portion of this video. They asked me if I wanted to participate in their Revlon August must-haves that occurs between August 16th and 22nd. Obviously I said yes because they're a very iconic brand and it is very cool to be working with them so it's not something that I wanted to pass up. Their must-haves event is taking place at Walgreens all over the country on those dates. Basically, they just want to bring attention to their new lip products for fall. They have tons of different options. Today I am using a lipstick in the shade Champagne on Ice. This is one of the frosted pearly shades. When I received this in the mail, I was like, however, I was extremely pleasantly surprised to find that they have actually nailed this formula. It doesn't come across as frosty, but rather very glossy and actually metallic. Like I wouldn't consider this to appear frosty or something that is aging me. I actually like really like this. This is something that I'm actually gonna be wearing more than I thought I would. Like honestly, I'm pleasantly surprised. All right, moving right along. If you would like to see how to get this wearable strobing technique as well as some tips on how to really rock a metallic lip without it looking too overdone, then obviously just keep watching the video. When I go metallic on the lips, I like to keep the eyes really simple because I feel like it keeps everything nice and balanced and not too like in your face drama everywhere. So I'm just going to be taking Winter Brown by Saucebox and using a fluffy blending brush and just blowing this out in the outer third of my upper lid and then dragging it out toward the tail of my brow to create a subtly elongated eye that's going to give you more of a doe-eyed effect with the thick cat eye that we're going to be doing next. For this said cat eye, I'm going to be using the Tarte Tartist Liner. This is a mix between a gel and a liquid liner, and I'm going to be starting this wing at the base of my lower lash, dragging it out, and then drawing it back in and creating a really thick, straight line. This is a very easy way to get a really symmetrical line on each eye. I really want a doe-eyed effect. Um, I feel like it's going to keep the look very flirty despite the fact that it is pretty simple on the eyes. To clean that up, I'll be using Vanilla by Saucebox and a flat shading brush and just running that along the edge of the liner because this liner seems to dry to a bit of a powder finish, so I figured going in with a powder would clean it up the most efficiently. For mascara, I'll be applying a little bit of Sinuosity Lash by Sigma and then going in with some false lashes. The style I'm using today are Tina by Lena Lashes and I applied these with my Esquito Lash Glue and let me just say that these are usually really hard to apply and that lash glue makes them like so simple, so simple. Moving into the face, I'll be contouring with Tote Blush by NYX Cosmetics on a tiny little NYX fluffy shading brush. These brushes just came out for everyone who asked me in my last video. They are absolutely amazing. And the Tote Blush is also like the perfect shade for mimicking shadows in your bone structure. It's really, really natural. To warm up my features, I'm going to be going in with Chocolate Soleil by Too Faced on a stippling brush just so that there's a nice light wash of color because as you can see, I'm applying it in a very standard bronzing effect like right over the nose and across the cheekbones and all the areas that the sun would naturally hit as well as in the sides of on the sides of my forehead temples and stuff like that all right so before we strobe my first tip to you is to if areas that you don't want to strobe that you want highlighted use a matte shade I'm using vanilla again by saucebox just to bring these areas forward without carrying the luminescence all over the face which can make you look greasy for strobing, I'm going to be using Moonstone by Becca on a stippling brush and I'm just going to be swirling this around on just the areas at like the top portion of my face. So the high planes of the cheekbones, above the brow, right down the center of the nose and on the cupid's bow. I find that this highlighter especially is very clear. There's not much of an undertone to it which gives the most natural strobing effect. You can really amp it up and it really does work well to 
really draw out your bone structure and make it look more prominent without the need to do a really strong contour to kind of balance everything out. And to enhance the effect, I usually go in with my MAC Fix Plus and just spray a light layer over my face, let it dry, and then I go back in with my Damp Beauty Blender and a little bit of that same matte highlighting shade and just matte out those original areas again so that our entire face isn't luminous. The trick with wearable strobing is to make sure that it's very pointedly done. You don't want your whole face to look shiny or it's going to defeat the purpose of the technique. So just remember to keep it on the areas that you want to draw more attention to. For the lips, I'll be lining them with Nude Beige Liner by NYX just to give a little bit of a base to this metallic lip we're going to be using as it is quite sheer and since it is very gold toned, I figured using a taupe base will really kind of warm it up and make it a lot more creamy looking in effect. So I'm just going to be slightly overlining them and then filling them in. And to finish things off, I will be going in with Champagne on Ice by Revlon. This shade, as I mentioned, was so much more beautiful than I was anticipating and it's a really nice metallic nude and it really works well with this type of look like this subtle strobing the matte cat eye just really all came together in a way that I was not expecting and that I really like so that is it for today's tutorial I hope you guys found this really helpful and learned some new tips thank you so much for watching please don't forget to check out the links in the down bar below in regards to this Revlon at Walgreens event I'll be back on Friday with another video for you guys so I will talk to you then bye